What is up, everyone? It's your girl Yingsu here for Upcomer, and this week we're talking about five times that League of Legends esports have pushed the boundaries and changed the industry. And no, I am not talking about Seraphine and whatever that was with her Twitter last year. I'm talking about esports. The music, the fashion, and the groundbreaking tech that all set a league apart in their biggest competitions throughout the years. And while we're at it, why don't you go ahead and set yourself apart by clicking on that subscribe button. First up, we've got Riot's introduction to music and the world beyond Runeterra. It's the 2014 world anthem Warriors by Imagine Dragons. September 17th, 2014, just one day before Worlds, Riot and Imagine Dragons dropped their Warriors music video. While the previous Worlds opening ceremony featured Limp Biscuit and a live orchestra playing some General League of Legends client music, the Imagine Dragons song was something entirely different. Warriors became the theme song for a WWE event in 2015 and reached number two on the Billboard charts. And it inspired other esports like the OWL and DJ Khaled. Overwatch Anyway, Riot continued incorporating music for all of their events, from Worlds to MSI and even some of the domestic playoffs. Everything has an anthem to hype it up and connect it to a larger audience. Kinda like this one. Moving from music to fashion, ever heard of Louis Vuitton? Well, of course you have, and so has Riot Games. They announced a multi-year partnership with LV in 2019, which is our number four entry. We are so excited to be announcing our partnership with Louis Vuitton. It is a first of its kind partnership within the esports space, being the official trophy case of the League of Legends World Championship. We're also working with their lead women's designer, Nicola Gesquier, to dress some of our in-game champions, as well as launching a capsule collection that fans will be able to purchase. Starting off with a custom trophy case for the 2019 World Championship, Riot and Louis Vuitton launched a whole apparel line with a League of Legends theme. You could sport an entire outfit from sneakers to fanny packs, and some were directly related to League of Legends, like a t-shirt with Kiana front and center, while others were a bit more subtle, like their custom camo pants. And while you could buy a $5,000 League of Legends Louis Vuitton leather jacket, players with less gold in the bank could rock more affordable custom Louis Vuitton skins in-game. Partners like Louis Vuitton, who are so iconic, who have been partnering with traditional sports like the FIFA World Cup, coming into League of Legends esports, I think it's a testament really to the impact that League of Legends and Riot Games has had on the industry as a whole. It's just evidence that, you know, esports is is rivaling what you're starting to see in uh, traditional sports. The partnership allowed Riot to reach a whole new category of potential fans, including apparently Selena Gomez. At number three, we have the groundbreaking technology used during Worlds 2020 that put the players on stage up in the clouds and under waterfalls. In partnership with Lux Machina and Possible Productions, Riot made history, using some absolutely next level tech for the event. This is the most elaborate mixed reality stage in the world. This stage renders at 32K resolution. So it is, in terms of computational imagery, the most sophisticated in the world. The cameras that we're using for our primary broadcast cameras are all tracked, and that tracking data 
gets mapped to this LED screen that's behind us. But it doesn't end there. Once the data is actually on the LEDs, we scenically extend it with augmented reality to make it look like the set goes on forever. Throughout the month-long tournament, players were more or less quarantined in Shanghai, playing each of their games on one small stage up until the finals. The riot normally holds the competition in multiple locations, that was just not possible during a pandemic. Instead, they built different locations in virtual reality. First, teams played in a virtual Shanghai, then they were on stage amidst thunderstorms. And every time the stakes got higher, the stage itself changed. It became clear that we could integrate pieces of what's happening within the competition in a way that has historically been a little bit less accessible. Replays and other things that keep the audience in the game when something interesting may be happening within the environment and actually have both things happen at once. Partway through the tournament, players started interacting with the virtual world. Like when G2 threatened to throw caps into virtual water, something Dan Wan took special notice of. It's the salt in the wound mimicking G2's victory dance right there. And of course, they had a pretty elaborate opening ceremony for the finals too. In the penultimate spot on this list, we have League of Legends, a franchised league model. In the early years of Western esports, there was less structure than what we're used to seeing today. Many esports were played in small circus style events and mini tournaments, and most of those were unaffiliated with the game developers themselves. Early on in the days, the players competed for almost no money. They did it just because they loved the game and they'd love to compete. It's so amazing to see League of Legends and esports grow so quickly. We went from competing in small rooms with 200 to 300 people to League of Legends selling out the Staples Center, Madison Square Garden, and even the Bird's Nest. But a couple of years into League of Legends esports, Riot Games completely took over. They created a seasonal structure that mimicked traditional sports with regional domestic seasons that led into big international tournaments. That was such a big deal to just be part of what this new league was called, you know, the LCS run by Riot Games when you know, developers had not put effort and resources into their own esports ecosystem and league structure. That structure provided stability, which allowed for more risks to be taken, more sponsorship opportunities, and overall, a more established career option for the players. While a traditional sports structure doesn't make sense for every esport, it was crucial for the ongoing success and development of league esports. A few years after implementing their seasonal structure, Riot broke the mold once again and introduced franchising. First with the LPL in summer 2017, quickly followed by the LCS, the LEC, and finally the LCK. I am honored to be a part of the Team Liquid family. To Liquid Nation, Thank you. We couldn't have gotten here without your support. With franchising came a revenue sharing, league expansion, and more stability year over year. The traditional sports model and franchise leagues are defining characteristics of League of Legends esports and a big reason why it's so successful today. We need to play into the memes, right? Big money, big watches, big glasses, you know, like bring the high paid by Steve. <laughs> For our number one spot, we have none other than KDA, the virtual musical group that would forever transform Riot Games and League Esports. Within the first 24 hours of release, KDA's music video had over 5 million views, breaking the YouTube record for a K-pop group song release. And just one day later, it almost tripled with more than 13 million views in the first 48 hours. a music group 
musical group either. Not only did each of the champions involved receive a special KDA skin, but there was a slew of in-game content associated with the project. The world's 2018 opening ceremony included a performance with the real-life musicians and the virtual characters with them, using visual effects to display them on screen as if the champions themselves were live on stage. The success of KDA led Riot down other musical avenues in the following years. In 2019, they partnered with various rappers to form a new group, True Damage. And just like with KDA's semi-real, semi-holographic performance, True Damage's hit single Giants came to life at Worlds. Two years after their original hit single, KDA came back with an entire EP, even featuring members from Twice, and of course, more skins. Sitting over a billion plays on YouTube and Spotify combined, KDA changed Riot. Some have even suggested that the organization we call Riot Games is really just a music company, not a game developer. I mean, I know a lot of people that actually listen to KDA, but they don't play League of Legends. As in, they've heard their songs and stuff and they know Popstar, but they don't know anything about League of Legends, which kind of blows your mind, really, um, how a gaming developer, a games developer has managed to do that. 